Hi everybody, welcome into the Wolfman Gardening Channel. Today, we've got to cover frost and frost protection. Now, I know a lot of you out on the East Coast, are, they may have had to deal with this yesterday or last night. We'll get that last one or two really cold temperatures and now then it's going to have a chance for a frost. What do we do? If we've already got some of these small transplants and we already have them out in the garden, then we probably need to protect them in order to keep from losing our plant or losing our harvest. So today I want to go over five ways that you can kind of protect and things that you can do to protect your little transplants if they're already out in the garden. Let's get to it. We all get to where we want to put our plants out and maybe we get a little carried away. Everything looks good and then just all of a sudden we have that or that last minute chance of a slight frost. So what is frost? There's two different types. There's a frost, there's a light frost and there's a hard frost. Now a frost is anytime the air temperature gets down to 32 degrees at ground level. Now a hard frost is when the air temperature reaches 28 degrees for at least four consecutive hours. That's where you get that hard frost. If we already have some of our plants outside or some of our vegetables, whether they're in containers or whether in the garden, we need to protect some of these. I'm gonna give you three different categories and what your plant will actually fall under in order to be whether they're frost tolerant, whether they will not tolerate a frost, or whether they'll tolerate a hard frost. And let's get to it. Let's jump right into it. Now there's several plants that can recover from a brief frost. Now very few plants or vegetables are going to recover from a hard frost. And let's break that down a little bit. We'll start off by the plants that can stand a light frost. Now, your artichoke, Chinese cabbage, radish, potatoes, celery, a lot of your leaf lettuces, collards, peas, cauliflower, and mustard. Now, there may be a few more that I didn't, can't think of right off the top of my head, but those are some of the ones that uh, a lot of the varieties, I don't, nor I don't grow all of them, but at any given point or time, I will grow any of this that I've mentioned today. Let's talk about plants that are very frost tender, will not even survive a light frost. Your frost tender plants are your, are your squash, your cucumbers, your melons, your peppers, your tomatoes, eggplant, corn, okra, and sweet potato. Note in the first one, a light frost, we said the potatoes will handle a light frost. But you gotta remember your sweet potatoes, they're a really warm climate vegetable. So they will not tolerate a frost. Let's go over the plants that can withstand a hard frost. We're talking, now let me, let me rephrase that. These are established plants that can tolerate a hard frost. Now any of these here, if they're just new seedlings and they've only been out a few days or so and they're not really established and the root system isn't established, then they're not gonna, they'll, they'll fall in that, the tender group of vegetables. Some of your vegetable plants that will tolerate a hard frost will be your broccoli, your kale, Brussels sprouts, onions, beets, cabbage, your parsnips, your spinach, arugula, Swiss chards, turnips. Those are some of the ones that can withstand a hard frost. Now what is a hard frost? And I explained to you before, hard frost is four consecutive hours of below 28 degrees. Now the ones I just mentioned, I've seen them withstand temperatures all the way down to the low 20s but like I said, they have got to be established. Let's say you've already established them. You've already planted them out. It was supposed to be really nice and it was gonna, you know, that was the end of the frost and freeze. 
And then Mother Nature decides to throw in a curveball and throw that one last late frost. There's five ways that I'm going to tell you right now that we protect our vegetables in my garden here. One of them is simply put a blanket or sheet over the top of them. Now, with this as a cloth blanket or sheet, and it's not the actual frost protection cloth, then you're going to want to, when you, when you cover this up, put a wooden stake or something to keep the actual blanket or the sheet off the foliage. If <laughs> I've seen the frost, if, one, if, if this foliage here, say the top of this, and, and you've got the cloth top right on the top of this, it can actually frost through that cloth onto this. So you want to make sure you take a, say you've got a, something and you want to put something up above it. That way the cloth is actually touching the top of your stake, not the top of your foliage. Another thing you can do is use garden hoops or plastic. Use some type of PVC garden, you know, they sell these garden hoops where you can put over the top of these. They work really well. Or you can do the same thing with plastic. It's just, you know, make it like a little teepee or a little tent over the top of your vegetables. The simple way to do it would be your third way, which is if they're in a container or they're in something that you can move, just move them in to under underneath a deck or underneath something where it's gonna protect it a little bit from the frost. If it's gonna get down to cool temperatures, I would recommend bringing them into a garage. Now you don't wanna bring them in to extremely warm temperatures of the house. These are already acclimated to the cooler temperatures. So if you move them in to the house, that could actually do is do more damage. And if you bring them in and they're really, they're acclimated to all this cool temperatures, but yet you bring them in and you shock them because the house is 75 degrees. Well, some houses are 75 degrees. Another thing you wanna do is simply water. If you give a really good watering to your plants, now, I wouldn't recommend watering the foliage, so, but I would water these plants because damp soil can actually be four times more warm than dry soil. With damp soil, that it's going to pull that, that heat and it's going to keep that ground uh, temperature a little bit warmer. Another thing you can do is buckets or some type of container and just flip it over the top. Flip it over the top of your plant and there it is, it's frost, frost protected. With all of these things that I've mentioned, these five things, the one thing I want to stress, you don't want to, you don't want to cover these up too early. Say, if you're doing it too early in the evening and then the sun is beating down in that last little bit, because any time, even this like this greenhouse, if we don't vent the ends, you know, this, it gets extremely hot in here. It could be 30 degrees outside, and with the sun beating in on this, it could be almost uh, upwards to 85, 90 degrees in here. It can get extremely hot. So you gotta remember when you cover your plants, you wanna do it right at dusk, or right before the sun, or as the sun goes down. That way they're not underneath that cover, and you're, you don't have the chance for them to overheat. Another thing is to make sure that you don't leave them on too long the next day. You know, if you can't be there to take these covers off the top and you leave them underneath that bucket or underneath that cover all day long the next day when that sun's beating down on it, there's a good chance your plants are gonna die from that. So with that being said, frost is a part of nature. I don't like it. It, it seems like every year we always get that late frost we always get all those plants out. We get everything ready. Everything's looking really good. And then Mother Nature likes to throw in that last frost and really put a damper in things. With these five tips, hopefully that helps you enough to where you can protect and save your plants and we can have a bountiful harvest this year. Now I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you like it. If you do, think about subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell notification and it'll let you know anytime I post a new video. Like and share this video. Helps me reach others. It helps me reach a broader audience. 
and I'd like to thank everybody that has already subscribed to the channel. It means a lot to me, and I really appreciate it. So, like always, keep it growing.